All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm glad to see so many people could make it. I know this is a very busy time of year and I debated about when to do this um, next installment of the Instructional Leadership Webinars. Um, but as I've said, we do record it, so you have the opportunity to view it or your colleagues that weren't able to attend are able to um, watch at their convenience that works best for them. So we're going to begin today, uh, just remind you that this is um, our fifth series and that the purpose is to support you as instructional leaders in the work that you're doing and that we believe in the premise that um, investing in professional development for you will um, create um, increased student achievement and um, high achievement within your building. So we're going to begin with prayer. Get my thing to move here. So if we can just take a minute to quiet ourselves at the end of the, a busy day, especially during this time of the year, that the to-do list seems never-ending. Our prayer today is called The Work That Is Ours To Do. Holy One, you have created work so that we can value our lives. Through work, you give each one of us the opportunity to learn, to overcome obstacles, and to feel the taste of accomplishment. Work has become a sentinel to virtue, making it possible to have peace, health, abundance, and ease. We are privileged because you stand by, Holy One, with your positive and encouraging inspiration. With the good disposition you offer us, we discover through our work the joy of living. Holy One, you gave us this spice of life and the opportunity to serve your purposes. Thanks to you, we know how to work and to put our imprint on the world for useful changes. Without work, life seems to be a ship adrift at sea. Through our work, we are leaders and captains of our lives. Thank you for the grace of being able to begin and to accomplish as well as we can the work that is ours to do. Amen. So as I said earlier, I just asked each of you to, uh, if you're possible to mute your audio that way, if you have an interruption that you need to attend to, which at this time of year is uh, highly anticipated and understandable. So if you could make sure to mute your audio, I'd, it would be appreciated. Um, just a reminder that the purpose of our instructional leadership uh, webinar series is that we're making sure to provide you not, we're moving away from the quick fix systemic approach to school improvement and not a one-time um, deal that will need to be changing in the future. We want this to be a process that you walk through that will continually guide improvement within your buildings. Just a reminder, because it's been a while since we've met, that we have five components to our blueprint process. And those of you who are new, this is new to you as well. For those of you who were here with us last year, you walked through this process with us. There's five components, and that each component has the tools that um, make that work happen. We've covered those four tools in our learning process. The fifth tool, that differentiating supervision of teaching and learning, um, we're going to be focusing on in September, and that's going to cover um, uh, look fours within your walkthroughs. And that we're going to walk through today the process of pulling all that work together from our first four um, steps and presenting it to your constituents. Um, and as we've said um, in each of our webinars that we understand that each of our, you are in different places in this work. You all have different um, makeups within your buildings and different uh, situations, settings that are taking place. And that each step of this process is being presented from the beginning step or from the starting point. And depending upon where you are at within this process, that information can be used where you are at in the, within your building. So do not feel you need to start at the beginning if you are further along in the process. If you feel you need to start at the beginning, that is acceptable as well. So today our um, session is on the State of the Schools report, and we all know that just as the President of the United States does a State of the Schools report, um, State of the Union, before the nation of the United States on important matters and weighty um, issues. Um, we, as administrators, also must need to update our constituents on teaching and learning initiatives that are taking place within our buildings and any student achievement that's taking place. 
Um, we could affectionately refer to it as the state of the schools report, but for you, for many of you um, who have been in administration for a year, for a few years, know that maybe it could be entitled the annual progress report or the APR. And your APR or your state of the schools report is going to assist you in, as school leaders to review and analyze the work that you have done already and maybe to uh, set out a few goal areas and the work that still needs to be done. Um, but it also, um, it's not necessarily a negative thing. It's also a very positive thing because it gives you the opportunity to show off what you've been implementing. You've done a lot of hard work and this is a time for you to show off um, those things and how you've impacted um, student learning and achievement within your buildings. Um, Iowa Code, we are all familiar with Chapter 12 of Iowa Code, uh, that each school district and accredited non-public school in Iowa is required to meet annual reporting requirements. And this, um, meeting this requirement includes submitting data information to the department and distributing all required reporting data information to the local community. Today, our focus is not necessarily going to be on the C plan, which is part, the, AP, the C plan is due September 15th, and one component of that is your APR. And today our focus is not necessarily on the annual progress report, which you're submitting to the Department of Edge, but what you, the information you're gonna be uh, providing to your local community and your local constituents. And as I've said before, we're all in different places. And in your site, maybe at a spot where you faithfully report out an annual progress report to your stakeholders, and you've been doing this for years. If so, I will let you know that it's going to be a review, and you might have a few bits of new information that um, you maybe have not been including in your annual progress report. Um, for those of you who are new administrators to the diocese and never created an APR for your building, Today we're gonna to provide you with the specifics on how to complete your report. And maybe your site has not published an APR um, or it's been a while since you've done so. So today's gonna to be a refresher and hopefully get you back on track um, to getting that APR out to your community. So we're gonna start with who is the audience for your APR. And of course that's going to be um, your families, your school boards, um, your parish members, and then even community members. Um, I will caution you, though, that, um, as Kim has said, know your data, know your public school's data, but do not share your, uh, your neighbor's data. So what that means is that we all have our data. We're going to be putting in our school's report. Um, our data is probably going to look pretty good, but that's not a time to... Um, share the other our neighbors data um, the, your constituents have the ability to um, access that data and they can do that on their on their own accord not through your APR so um, what's going to be what content is going to be in your state of schools report it's going to contain student achievement data and information related to your school goals and um, other information is able to be included to even give a more comprehensive portfolio but that is up to you to determine what that includes. All right, so we're gonna get into the required components of your um, APR. You're going to need to have, first of all, your required component in reading. That's your measurable long range goal um, that you had for 2014, 2015. You'll need to include whether that goal was met, how do you know that goal was met, and then of course your 2015, 2016 annual goal. This is going to be based on your Iowa assessment data that you have. The next required component is in math, the same as in reading. Your long-range goal for 2014-2015 was the goal met, how do you know, and then your, your new goal for 2015-2016. And then for uh, those schools that are serving um, uh, eighth grade and up, you'll need to have a science goal. You'll need to have a measurable long-range goal in the area of science. Was the goal met? How do you know? And then, of course, your 2015-2016 annual goals as well. Another required component of your APR, which would be um, important to include in your report to the public, would be any locally defined indicators and progress made on these indicators. I went through our um, APRs that we have been submitting as archdiocesan schools, and here are just some of the following that 
um, schools across the diocese have submitted. So some things that you might want to consider or if you're looking for different indicators to utilize. Um, attendance, possibly meeting student learning needs or the use of differentiation. Um, this might be measured by course grades, um, ACT scores, advanced placement data, graduation rates, um, other data that you, other local assessments that you use, such as Dibbles, DRA, or BRI. You use CBMs, curriculum-based measures, or if you do MAP testing. Title I placements, safe environment, school uh, climates, and that can be measured by your acre assessments, possibly office referrals, behavior reports. Um, another one local indicator might be preparation for transition. If you are a building that only goes through possibly sixth or eighth grade when they transition to the public system, and that could include the use of student surveys or parent surveys, 21st century skills, parent involvement, um, service um, by your students, um, participation in extracurricular activities, technology integration, and then as I said earlier, student achievement based on maybe some other local assessments that you use, Dibbles, DRA, or BRIs, CBMs, and MAP testing. All right, the next step, required component, um, and this is something you're gonna want to include in your APR as well, is um, use of multiple assessments as a certified non-public. We are required to give a multiple assessment in the area of reading and math, and like I said, if you have those higher grades, you're going to need to also do one in science. In the past, we had used ICAMS and SCAS. The ICAMS are no longer available. Um, I will just tell you the bare bones of the law requires that one assessment be given in one grade. Is that best practice? Not necessarily, but that is the bare bones of the law. The universal screener that you utilize within your buildings, if you're an a elementary building, can meet your requirement for reading. Um, if you're in need of some additional assessment ideas or you're looking for the list of um, assessments that maybe have been used within the state, I do have some information that um, if you want to contact me, I can um, help you out with that. But just remember that the bare bones is one assessment in each grade. Another component, and this is for required for uh, students in 7th through 12th, is that dropout rate. And then it includes the total number and then divide it out by demographics. Some additional components that you may want to include within your annual progress report. Remember, this is a time to um, show off the things that you're doing within your buildings. So you might want to include enrollment trends, student attendance, free and reduced lunch, class size, some of the great things that are taking place and the high um, percentage of success that you're having in those areas. Maybe some of those other local benchmarks if you're doing another assessment. Um, one example, that I've utilized in the past is we would give out uh, basic reading inventories or BRIs and we would promote the percentage of students who are reading on or above grade level, which is something we are very proud of and it was an opportunity for us to share that information with our community. Maybe some possible professional development that you're doing within your buildings and the impact that it's having within your, um, in your school. Just a few hints and tips about presenting yours. I know lots of you are in different places. Some of you are in systems where you may have a graphic designer who's designing your um, program. In some districts, you're, some schools, you're a standalone school, and it will be you who'll be designing it. Just a few things to remember, use different heading levels maybe to uh, organize your text in separate sections. Make sure your graphics are clear, um, readers can understand them. They get lots of information, they might be hard to interpret. And then limit the number of fonts and sizes and styles that you have going on within your um, document. Um, a few, what is going to be up next for us, as I alluded to earlier, is going to be look fors, and that's going to focus on um, your implementation of your professional development within your buildings and how you can monitor that um, during the walkthrough. And with that, I said it was going to be quick today. It looks like I'm probably under 15 minutes even. Um, have a great beginning of your year, and I hope everything goes well for everybody. We will see each of you tomorrow. If you have any questions. I have a question. Oh, yes, Mary Smock. How are you? I'm good. Um, I'm just wondering, if you just publish your APR, um, your CSIP on, the, on your website, does that meet the requirements of sharing your data? 
I mean, I know best practice would be to do more, but I want to know minimally if that's enough. Minimally, I am going to say that meets it because you are sharing it with your public. You okay. might want to allude to your parents and maybe a newsletter that it is there. Okay. But you Thank don't. You. You don't have to. Um, Thank you. You don't have to um, have a separate document, but I would I would encourage you to share at least let parents know that it is um, on there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, everybody is looking so. Everybody's looking so happy at the beginning of the year. Yes, Susan. Since this is for last year, then do I need to report on junior high and include that, but not include them on the goals going forward? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a great, great evening, a great start to your school year, and we'll see all of you tomorrow in Waterloo.